I don't consider Ascent to be a particularly amazing map for Fnatic, but they have all the pieces they need to be an excellent Ascent team. It's just never been a map that they've been a fantastic at. I feel like it doesn't really fit Boaster's IGLing style as much. I think that this map is all about executing the retakes perfectly and having excellent defensive setups that have tons of layers to them. On the attack side, it's being able to uh, get hard exx, hard post plants kind of executed. Uh, let's have a look at it. So you, you've you got a pistol round setup over here where Dirk is playing behind the box, yeah? So Dirk is doing this normally... When you see teams do this, they'll be trying to like play somebody in heaven who swings, jumps out, and baits for the second player. So this this idea of baiting for a player behind a box is a theme of quite a lot of the pistol rounds that you're going to see. It looks like this player is playing off a recon dart. So Leo's got his recon dart up. And if this ends up getting smoked here, he's going to position himself like that. Recon here for Durka to be able to find kills off. So they have some kind of not super heavy commitment set up over towards A, where Durka might be able to land something, and then they're mostly going to be playing a bit of a retake. But it's this that intrigues me over here, which we're going to be watching the POV of. Because I, I don't really think that I've seen a pistol round set up like this. I don't know what they're playing off. Okay, Chronicle uses his knife early. That's a team flash for Fennel. Chronicle uses his nade. Paranoia. For Alpha to then swing through the smoke. And now they've got double players over towards stairs. Boaster's trying to reposition over towards dice. Good kill from Boaster. And now here come the A players. It should be fairly easy for Boaster to pick this up. He gets one. Chronicle goes for the flash peek through there. Is that a good idea for Chronicle to go for that? I mean, he knows as soon as this smoke goes down and it's positioned like this, I mean, look at this smoke from Fennel. It's so obvious where they're going because the only thing that makes any sense when you run that smoke that blooms out into the site instead of the other way is that you're going up tree. So it is a bit risky for Chronicle to be doing that flash playthrough, to be honest. He's got a bulldog there. And if anyone's turned his flash properly... He finds a nice timing, though, off, bon off Boaster's contact. They shocked out early and decide not to fight for it. So you know now that the KO is probably not here because Leo is here. So you might want to try and accelerate into a full A pop if you're Fennel. Chronicle's already booking his way over here, but he has used the knife. Paranoia is nicely timed by Boaster. He has to be holding Paranoia there in backside because the knife is going to come through. They knife over towards Dice. It catches onto Boaster, but he still manages to get the Paranoia off. The recon comes through too. So now there's a lot of pressure on these other players coming out, right? They're blinded and there's a recon, which means that this jet player is very much isolated. Um, and Chronicle is going to be able to uh, come out over heaven and Boaster is going to be able to fight the jet. At least that's the idea. Good trade by Chronicle. Boaster wasn't quite able to, to get it done there, but that's fine. Chronicle gets another. Leo's looking to try and get in. They have Heaven Control. I really don't like this smoke that, uh, that Fennel have thrown. I think Heaven Smokes are troll. Look at Alpha here. He's just out on sight. So Fnatic's in a 3v2. Leo's going to have his recon back. He just got it, in fact. So now you just you can just wait for them to plant. You can just hold really patiently here. They can't push heaven because Dirk has got the op there. Leo's occasionally checking mid to see whether they've rotated. Smoke comes down. They know that it's going to end A right now. So they could go for a recon and flood this, which they do. Maybe that recon would have been better timed as the plant went down there because they actually allowed um, a, a moment for Fennel to break it. Big push. So that's that's based off Alpha Ye using this Nano Swarm, right? So as the Alpha as the Nano Swarm goes out, Gon tries to find a timing, thinking that Alpha Yell probably not have his gun out as you know as ready because he's just thrown a Nano Swarm. Catches the timing as Leo leaves to go up towards heaven. Leo's jumping out. And doesn't look great there. I think that there was better stuff that Leo could have done with the recon dart. Um, they didn't communicate properly whether or not they wanted to flood or whether or not they wanted to get Durka in a more pushed up position. You know, when they use the recon, Durka's nowhere near being able to assist with this. Um, there's other weapons that Durka could have picked up had he had they been deciding to go for a flood. 
And without the recon dart, they really struggled. They didn't even coordinate the way that Durka and Leo jumped into the site or anything like that. They just split it into a series of 1v1s. So, uh, and disadvantaged 1v1s as well because they were jumping down into the site. So, not particularly well played by Fnatic there, I don't think. You know you're Apparently, Japanese tier 2 teams love the Heaven Smoke. Well, that might be why they're in Japanese tier 2. Durka went for the buy with the Operator, and so now he's knocked down to a Marshal. Chronicle's got a fantastic retake ultimate to work with here, and they're not really worried about any ultimates on the other side of things. So uh, going for some kind of setup where you're going to be able to go for the retake is quite reasonable. Ooh. Durka just got deleted, but remember, he only had a Marshal in his hand, so that's not devastating. Chronicle and Boaster look like they want to try and make a play over here into a main. Nicely done by Gon. He's got information. He knows that there's two players now pushed up in... Even if he only saw one person. Now, this is the same smoke that they did on the pistol round. This is a this is a smoke that tells you immediately that they're trying to path like this, right? And I'm not saying that this is a bad idea to path like this. Actually, pathing like this is a big weakness in most defensive setups when it comes to um, Ascend. And it's particularly weak if you know that the defenders are playing heavy over A main, which they are. And, I mean, especially when you've killed their cat player. Uh, so it's not that this is bad, it's just that this is very obvious from Fennel currently. We'll see what Boaster and Chronicle end up doing. They're not in a great position to deal with this. Um, but I think it's going to require one of these B players to come over and watch uh, this area. We'll see whether they actually go for that, though. They go for a flash through. They go two for two in that situation, but I don't think that they do a good job of dealing with that. It's exactly what I said in the pistol round. Going for a flash play in there, you know that the most, the majority of the attackers are going to be in that area. Probably three players, because it's very likely they're doing a 1-3-1 one, one as soon as you see gone in this area. So as soon as you see the omen here, I think you can be pretty confident with a smoke here as well that they're going for a very weird 1-3-1 one, one, or possibly even a 4-1 kind of setup. Maybe it might be a 3-2 setup where they're trying to split into A like this. Um, but it's gonna be some kind of heavy, heavy people in this area. And just going for one flash through there, to me, doesn't make enough sense. You want to be trying to contain them and play for the site and try and fight them over, like, heaven control and fight them once they get here as well. And now they've left the A site completely open. Fnatic have had to rotate to try and cover that gap to see if Fennel are going for the A push, which they aren't. At this point, Fnatic are just gambling that they've gone back to B because they didn't hit A. Fennel are thinking in their heads that they're probably split one and one. Like, they're probably thinking we'll, we'll find a Sova here because the Killjoy will still be over with their utility on B. They don't even really clear the site properly, but again, the Sova would not be playing in a hard anchor spot because they're a Sova. Yeah, so the, and now they just go for the save. From Bosa's point of view right now, he's got to worry about this play coming through. You can see actually the, the pings coming through, which I think are them just talking about the pathing of the attackers in the pistol and the uh, fourth round there. And you need to be able to deal with that. One of the ways that you might be able to deal with that is by getting Durka to op this angle instead of trying to go for something aggressive here or something aggressive in mid. You could try to control catwalk as well so that they can't walk down there. So that might involve getting Durka posted on something like this or pushing a player onto this area so that they could watch this. And then when mid gets smoked, somebody's going to be able to rotate over and the A players are going to be able to hold that. It might also involve... There's many... I'm, I'm explaining that there's tons of different ways that you can approach this. Chronicle could be holding this angle and then be throwing his utility to try to stop them getting through while Boaster just, you know, early round plays for some A main control and then drops back uh, at this kind of timing. And, you know, Boaster can even play the switch here and go for a paranoia and push through as Chronicle gets pressured. Tons and tons of different ways to approach this. But I think playing double A main and then flashing through the smoke is not a great one and I assume they're not going to continue doing that. So they flash over the top. Doesn't seem like the greatest flash to me. But Gon has just TP'd into the, the like, the back of them. Um, they obviously have had a talk about the fact that they just want to be grouping up, getting ready to flood defend A, because these rotates are over so quickly. They have used recon, they've used a flash, they've used a smoke, so they've used quite a lot of utility here. But what I'm saying is after about... 10 seconds, 15 seconds of them not hitting, your B players need to start spreading back out again 
Turret's still holding mid contact and B main contact as well. You still have the KO ultimate to be able to retake A. Leo might want to look for some information in mid with his drone soon. Because you're not really going to need the drone for retake, I don't think. You're going to want to flash recon with the KO ultimate. So I think you can afford to use the drone. You're not saving it for retake, in my opinion. Yeah, but the Sova is now droning. So they know that there's at least one over towards A. And this is this is quite a nice idea by Fennel. They're faking with their Sova while everybody else is going down mid to B. Leo's missed the timing as well. Full contact all the way through. They broke the turret though. But these Fnatic players have just been pushed into back sight. Only 10 seconds left. They're not going to expect these guys to be so pushed up against them. Yeah. I think that's a great call by the Fennel guys to just contact all the way in afterwards. I think that's completely sent Fnatic's brains spiraling there. But I think the positioning is horrible by the Fnatic guys. They've got two players holding in back B site. They have no information down mid. Leo didn't use his drone to even gather any information in mid. They, they don't know where anybody is. It's a really badly played defensive round by Fnatic. In terms of the info game. Two Bulldogs online for Fnatic. They're still going to be able to buy this round. And they're going to try and fight super heavy over mid. Because this is an area that Fennel have been going into. They hear a teleport in A main. They don't see anything in mid. Chronicle's looking over towards A right now. Chronicle still has his ultimate, right? So they can still play A retake. They dash into A. We'll see whether Rhea is able to get off some kind of lurk. Rhea might clash with Alphier in mid right now. Yeah. Okay, so Rhea's been spotted. So what... We're watching Alpha Yeah fight against Rhea and making sure that this lurk play can't happen. What's happening on the site, which I'll bring up the minimap to show you because it's not on camera, is that we have the KO ultimate being popped. We've got a paranoia that comes through like this. There's a recon dart as well, but I think the recon dart ends up getting broken. So there's the there's the KO ultimate at this timing. Paranoia comes through on the Jenny players. But the Paranoia is like for Jenny and Hell. It doesn't really cover the dice players as well. I feel like a Paranoia that goes more like this is going to be better than the one that goes up like that. But, all right, that's the one that Boast has gone for. They also, they send the Recon Dart in with that, but they don't send a Flash from Chronicle. So they're not comboing the Flash Recon together. They're comboing Paranoia Recon together. But I think that you can get... Much better value by also adding a KO flash in there. Um, because it additionally pops high up in the air, which is much more where the recon is going to be. Much more likely to be able to get off really good recon dart pressure with that. <clears throat> As you can see, the recon dart on the minimap gets broken instantly. They do find a pick onto this jet who was pushed out in this area. Um, hard to tell exactly how Durka gets the kill on the jet. But Chronicle's still got his full utility available here. We'll go back into the monitor because we're going to see what's happening over on screen. Duck has got out through heaven and the retake's been successful. Often what we would see in the past from Fnatic when they were running these retakes is that Boaster would put a smoke here and he would teleport inside of it. So, and I think maybe he only does that if door is actually smoked off. So if this is smoked off, Boaster loves putting a smoke here and then TPing into it. Uh, which creates a lot of pressure on people holding here or holding towards Switch. Uh, because then, you know, Boaster can swing out of the smoke and the player at Switch can trade him. Or the player, like, retaking from this direction can trade him. Something like that. But this retake was really won by Durka being able to get out through heaven properly. They went for fake A main control at the start of the round. And now they're playing over towards Cat. Don't know really what Boaster's up to here. He's just checking the smoke. They hear a drone out through here, and they're going to smoke this off. Ooh, those are some nasty shots by the Fennel Jet. Those are some filthy shots. Boaster doesn't quite get out the paranoia. Gets caught by the recon dart as well. He's now under quite a lot of pressure here. But they've decided to leave because they know that 
they've got two out of three of the players on A. And now they've heard the recon dart as well. Wow, they get main control together and they... I feel like, okay, these guys already know that three of the defenders are over towards A. But instead of going for the full rotate over towards B, they've just decided to go for an A re-hit through cat like this. Which I think usually, usually it's a good idea for teams to do that when they've burnt their jet dash. Like when you're trying to jet dash in, but you, you get it cancelled by a knife or a paranoia or something like that, then it's best to try and go for a re-hit. But in this situation, just rotate. If Fnatic win this round, I think it was extremely avoidable by Fennel. Oh, Leo gets a kill. Yeah, this is, yeah, this, this, this is just a throw by Fennel. Oh, well, no, there's no time. Chronicle can just survive. Well, that's, that should have been a lost round by Fnatic. I would be really pissed if I was the Fennel Jet right now, because that's just a bad call from their team. Switch looking at that market door. It's going to alert to their presence, so immediately I can see Chronicle starting to push his way through, but a great turret here. Gonna at least keep him in really interesting pathing by Fennel in a lot of these rounds. They know that it's not fake. It looks like Fnatic do not have a protocol in mind for when a team does this to them. Where if a team smokes this off and threatens to be pushing like this to be, it looks like they just don't have a setup to to react to this because Durka doesn't know what to do. He's looking at market and he's looking at CT and he's not in a good position to watch either of them. And Fnatic go back into what they often do in these kind of situations, which is just turtling. These two players end up just turtling on the B site. Instead of trying to take space in another direction, like for example, instead of... Um, you know, both are working forwards with Chronicle and trying to see if they could push mid, right? Or um, the Jet wrapping around to lane and asking for, you know, this to be smoked and seeing if they could push B main or something like that. Instead of trying to expand the map for the defenders, they just give up control and turtle further and further into the sites. And I think that's one of the biggest problems with Fnatic, and it always has been on this map, actually, is that they enjoy falling back into the sites, and it, that's really um, exploitable. This is this is where they went for the site pop. So they get flashed. Alpha gets one. Boaster gets the TP into backside. Gon gets slapped. And what I'm saying in this instance is Recon comes back online in like two seconds, so now they need to combo Flash Recon to try and get back in. Fnatic are getting too used to getting slammed by quick Turkish execs. Yeah. I mean, maybe. They, they do have better protocols against fast hits than the slow hits, I think. Many said on stream they've only had two days prac. Yeah, it, it does look like it. They've got a cam taking contact here. They've got Durka ready to updraft with knives through the window on players that would be in that position getting contact from the turret. You know, if Durka doesn't land anything, or even if he does, they have it all baiting for Alpha Year, who's in this position as well. So, cute little play over towards B main, but it's really this, like, A and mid area where they've been getting fucked up. Um, so, what does their setup over there look like? They dropped out of the B main setup and then went back into it as well. Droning down mid, but they don't drone into market. So it looks like, okay, they're going for the same play again here. So this time, Leo isn't using the recon die, he uses the drone. So if you look at what they've done differently here, Dirk is still in a very like bunkered position over on B. But Alpha Yeah has decided to try and take a timing up to market. So once this smoke has gone down and Leo's commed it, Alpha instead of dropping back into site is doing what I'm talking about in terms of like getting more info. So they still have full B main info here from the turret. So now Alpha is anticipating them walking like this. 
So he has picked the timing where he can walk up market. He's not worried about CT yet because they only just smoked this off. So he's trying to get close to market where he could potentially fight people or even if they all ran in from this direction, he could try and take the duel in market or take market control or kill them as they're coming out or something like that. Now, actually, this is a fake from Fennel. So this is a cool idea. They've already done this round previously. They're inserting the jet down mid and the, the other two of their team are going in this direction. My concern, however, is though... They are currently playing a 1-1-2-1 one, one, one kind of setup. So they don't have very many people here. This is only the two initiators. So unless this is going to be a fake, and these guys actually have the spike, so it doesn't particularly look like it, they should be probably trying to tell one of these guys to come and join them. So if, they, if the IGL has an idea in their head of where they want to end... So at the moment, you know, this could be a fake catwalk and they're actually going for a B split, in which case tell your A player to come and join you. Or this could be a um, a real A split happening, in which case tell the killjoy to come and join you. Uh, but the point being, you don't need these players still watching the extremities. Even, I mean, this guy's still got the turret up, for goodness sake. So whichever direction they're trying to go in, pull the other guy towards you. Fnatic, though, are getting information denied from them all over the map because they're so unwilling to push forwards and reclear other areas. Alpha is chatting up and is just reclearing spawn on his own. But this is only Alpha on his own reclearing spawn. If there had been any other people here, he would probably be dead right now. And Durka went for an updraft uh, in to check B main but didn't see anything there, and that's not great info. I mean, the turret got broken, so he's, like, checking for info there, so I guess that is somewhat decent info. But he's not with Alpha, he's not, you know, they haven't, they're not really trying to get information around the map. So, again, Fnatic are just getting, th this map is becoming smaller and smaller and smaller for them. The positive side for Fnatic is there's only 26 seconds left. Smoke comes through in B main. Like, Boaster doesn't even think about the B and player deep mid. Alpha should never be getting three there. A another poorly played round, in my opinion, from Fnatic, where their individual quality bails them out. So Boaster's tucked in main. Uh, in wine, sorry. The nade from Chronicle, though, wasn't good. Right? Oh. Derry Ali is actually in the corner of wine right now, and he's surviving. Uh, because the, the molly missed, the nade missed from Chronicle. Dariali then kills Boaster because Boaster thinks it's clear. So a pretty big mistake there. Alpha's trying to push out mid, putting pressure on these guys over towards Cat. Dirk has pushed all the way out, gets one. So now they're in a 4v3 where they have weapon advantages. Leo's trying to dominate this smoke. And he ends up getting overwhelmed. Chronicle isn't with him. Chronicle also gets overwhelmed. This smoke's doing a lot of work for them. They've put two of these smokes in A. Cool idea on the eco round. Uh, they, have, they have a smoke here, which lets them threaten like they could be getting out into tree. And then they actually updated it, gone this one which allows them to get out and then could allow them to push all the way through to grass as well so cool smoke it means that you're gonna have to watch it from this side and you're gonna have to watch it from the a main side i like the idea of it i think it's a very good play to go for that on an eco something where you need an advantage uh and leo ends up playing inside of it and dying i mean they're they're just saving again Fnatic constantly finding themselves in situations where they're just saving and one of the reasons why Fnatic are saving so often is because they're committing players to anchoring the site super heavily right like their players for Fnatic are dying on this round here and here trying to defend a but on b they're dying like here and here often um in previous rounds on a they've been dying like uh pushed up here 
or you know in wine they've just died in this round but they died um in a main before as well they're, they're not being able to keep a lot of players alive to go for retake situations they can play off site in a lot of these spots they have their killjoy ult to be able to play with in this round um there was no real reason for both of their initiators to be playing for information inside this smoke. They, If your opponents throw a smoke that's difficult for you to deal with, and I've heard Fnatic talk about this before in interviews too. I think it might have been even an interview with Mini. Or it could have been Boaster or something where he was talking about opponents that aren't as good as you playing inside smokes and making things more random. But you can decide to just avoid the variance of these situations by giving them that space this smoke is designed to take this kind of space right you can give it to them you can hold more passive positions and play retake in this kind of spot because you're going to have weapon advantage you're not going to give them the rifles that they now have uh and you're going to be able to play with either alts or utility that are going to be favorable for you i think that Fnatic really struggle with that idea this isn't what they're going to do next year, though, right? They're just running last year's strats for this event. It's not even last year's strats. Fnatic just look really rusty. Every time Fnatic play at their worst, there are similar themes. And I think one of their similar themes of playing badly on Ascent is that they tend to not play to re-clear enough territory on defense. I think they tend to play too quickly bunkering back into the sites, anticipating fast hits from coming through. So fakes work really well against them. And then you just end up taking map control and, and winning a lot of your attack rounds. I think this is the first round where we're actually seeing Leo and Durka play together. Which otherwise would be a like one of the most standard pairings that you have on the map. Like Usually, the way that I think about uh, Ascent defense is that often, your Omen and KO are going to be playing together. Your Jet and Sova are going to be playing together. And your Killjoy is going to be anchoring one of the sites, not usually B, and playing for a bit of mid info. Um, that's like the most standard kind of setup that you could go for. Um, and instead, Durka and Alpha have been playing it together a lot. So this is one of the first times that we're actually seeing this duo play. This is Chronicle throwing the flash that lands through this window. Uh, so it would blind anybody that's getting into B main. They shock dart early. They don't even go for the flash. I'm not sure why when Chronicle was in position to go for it, but they decided not to flash. Maybe they were only going to flash off noise. Uh, let me just go back to the beginning of the round as well. Why is there no Killjoy set up here? Okay, so Alpha decided not to buy any Nano Swarms or Alarm Bot in this round. So maybe that's why he's holding A, because he's only got the turret. That's it. So A looks incredibly weak here. Incredibly weak. Because usually your defenses are going to include Nano Swarm setups on one site, let's say lane. And then a KO knife on the other side to stop any kind of fast hit coming through there. So the, on A, they don't have the KO knife. They don't have a nade. The only defensive tool they have is a paranoia. One paranoia, that's it. So A looks astoundingly weak. And so I... Without even having an alarm bot in mid right now, you really want Chronicle to be coming over and helping A. If Chronicle didn't flash at the beginning of the round and you now have a player posted up in B, you want Leo to be looking after Market and you want Chronicle to be rotating because they've got to identify how weak A currently is. But they're not doing that. This looks dangerous to me. Yeah, you should have bought a Bulldog and bought Utility. Or Guardian, I guess, because he's a really fucking good aimer. But yeah, he should have bought Util. Boaster gets Jiggle Pete. Okay, this this guy, guy's this attack guy, opening looks fantastic. So this is where, again, this is where I feel like a lot of other teams, after you see that the attackers have been able to get posted, their attack operator has been able to get posted on this line, right? So they control this area of mid, and they're probably at least having one player in A main spotting that, right? And you don't have any information in A main as well. So from the from the defender's POV, you think that the attackers have basically like all of this control of the map. And I guess you could talk about this sight line as well, basically, right? So this, this all kind of belongs to the attack side. And Chronicle's just been peaking like this angle. So I guess in technically close mid also belongs to the attackers too. But you need to start retaking some of that back. And if the attackers are going to be peeking down this kind of lane, then usually they're not also going to be fighting over B main, right? Because that would just be a really weird setup to have. Players deep into B main and players deep into catwalk. It doesn't synergize well at all. You're really, really far away from each other. 
and you can't end on one of the sites if you get an opportunity to. So I would like to see in this situation, Leo use some of his remaining Sova utility or Chronicle to use some of his utility to push Durka out through tiles. And I'm talking earlier on in the round, like as the pick came through. So I'm talking... Like as Boaster dies here... This guy, put it, put it. As Boaster dies here, the reaction from these B players is to start falling away from B main because they're anticipating it being a hit on A. You're not holding A, right? There's no world in which you're holding A. If they end up actually committing to A right now, you're playing retake anyway. You are not helping Alpha yet. There's just no chance. He's only got a turret. My dude is just trying to go one for one or whatever he can, and then you're playing retake. So... I think it makes far more sense in this situation for Leo, who's over here, to run forwards and either drone or recon or send a recon that lands back here or Chronicle to flash the window or do something to get Durka more aggressively out posted on this kind of line. That's going to get you information. That's going to get Durka on a faster flank if they do commit to A so that you can be pressuring them from behind as well. You're, you're not going to give up your information towards market, but you're actually going to do something productive with your time instead of just falling back, which is... You know, they look really... They, they don't exactly know what to do. Like, Durka just tucks into this corner, which doesn't get them any more information. The two initiators are scrambling, too. They look really out of sorts, rusty, and they're not doing anything proactive on the defense side. So now Fnatic just don't really know what's going on. They, they don't have any info over here. Maybe Leo could, like, re-drone towards grass. Durka's heard some people, so he pops his dash. Manages to get out. And now there's two initiators here as well. And this is really where the Fnatic individual ability is going to shine. Leo dies. That flash doesn't really do... Oh my god, wait. How does that flash work for that? What? Wait, that's crazy. Wow, that flash pops so perfectly in window that it still blinds people who are facing B main. Holy shit. I really didn't think that was going to work. That's kind of phenomenal. And there's always so little time here with Fennel. Uh, that is the worst aiming I've ever seen from Alphia. Alphia usually would be killing all of them there. That looks like me. And they still win the round. I mean, that, that situation at the very end there is excellent initiator support for Durka. But the actual way in which they're playing the macro, the boaster calling aspect of this was shockingly poor, I think. And not just boaster, actually. Boaster shouldn't be the only person that gets the flack for that. Because I think Durka and Leo in particular should be the ones also calling proactive stuff on their defensive side. Like, Durka should be calling, like, hey, let me, like, Leo, give me this dart, uh, dart or Chronicle, give me this flash, we need to retake info in this area. Or, you know, Leo should be like, I'm redrawing mid because we need info. These players should be able to call that kind of stuff themselves, but obviously as the IGL, mostly mostly a rough one from Boaster. Well prepped for their opponent. Same result from the first half that oh, wait. Fnatic jump across. Get, get five. Four okay. players. Durka didn't burn his dash though, so not too much of a tragedy. I'd walk through B and fucking kill them all. That's just me personally. We've got pings going up here from Fnatic. So it looks like they might want to go for the DRX pathing. True and real. What a mid crunch. What a mid crunch. They drone to cross mid. And honestly, I'm not 100% sure why Boaster doesn't smoke it. Uh, it might be because Boaster wants to use... I'm not sure. If Boaster is planning to call for his team to path like this, he only really needs one smoke for here. Um, and you could even use the jet smoke. You might not even have to use the omen smoke. Depending on how tight you are behind Durka. So I'm not sure why Boaster wants to keep both of his smokes. It would be most standard in this kind of position for Boaster to smoke here or to smoke here um, to make it safer for his team to cross. It might just be that he wants it to feel like a B split. So he doesn't want to smoke mid and give away that he's actually crossing to Cat. He might be trying to, 
you know, just drone there to make it look like they're following it down mid and going for a B split. So he doesn't want to smoke to give it away. But yeah, the Fnatic players don't really hold for that. And then Dariali pops them. And then at that point, yeah, they just, they caught everybody. Wow, what a great smoke to be able to get him out from hell. Uh, I'm not really sure why these two haven't been able to get out through A main, though. Oh, it was. Yeah, it's the nade from CLZ. My bad. No, actually, the nade is gone at this point. So I would expect Chronicle and Leo to be trying to get into the site here and help. But they just don't walk through. I don't really know why. I think they're just scared. I think the way that I think about Ascent A from watching a lot of Loud play it back when they were by far and away the best team in the world at this is that it's crucially, crucially important that you get players posted on A Heaven. I think that is one of the best ways of securing this. So something that I frequently see teams fail to do is put mollies in this smoke and this area of heaven um so the ko molly that chronicle threw landed in heaven that's good alpha yeah was on the lurk so they don't have anything for this smoke but boaster was watching it so that's fine right but you just need to be able to control the smoke and you need to control heaven and ideally i think you want to be using mollies there and you want people posted on it and what loud used to do a lot of that was really really good is that they would bait out this smoke bait out this smoke by going to like push a as quickly as possible and when the omen ran out of smokes they would go for their a exec because they could get posted on heaven from a main and they would use the fact that they had this massive advantage because they actually could get people attackers on this line so it becomes incredibly difficult for like you see how the defenders here want to be trying to flood out into heaven they're not trying to actually get to the site but they're just trying to control these angles over towards dice and maybe over towards jenny that kind of stuff if you as the attackers stop them from doing that by posting up yourself you've got a huge advantage so i think you do have to be a little bit cautious of being caught by recons or flashes or you know pop flash through here or something like that but i think in general you want to be trying to get people through this smoke so that they can fight aggressive it's fine to keep someone in this smoke to trade because they'll avoid getting caught by a pop flash for example so let's say you don't have a molly on the door smoke if somebody pop flashes through that it's probably going to catch boaster who was looking like this All right so if, let's say boaster who's here gets caught by this pop flash player there can be a player inside the smoke who comes out and trades boaster i think that's fine but i think having two players hiding in a main inside a smoke just means that you don't have enough control over heaven and over angles in general on the site. Um, so instead, Fnatic are playing this in quite a passive manner, which has left them with only two players alive, sure, but also no site control. That's a lot of people caught by that. No flash being used there, though? Good paranoia? Oh, nice spam by Chronicle as well. Nice idea there, trying to flush out that Jenny player. Nice, nice eco round so far by Fnatic. I like the way that they played that. Really good utility being used to put pressure on this Jenny player. I think there was a moment there where the Fennel KO could have tried to re-aggress into them by pop flashing from the door, like from the door back into tree. But as soon as he started backpedaling, there was just waves of Fnatic utility coming at him. Sova ult from Leo in this round. He gets suppressed. You see the Sova is over towards B. Makes it feel like there's going to be some mid-pressure. They throw out the Omen smoke. Durka's in a bit of a pressured situation here. He's Durka's the only one in mid right now. And he's been drawn from Cat. There's a smoke in his face here as well. That's a really useful knife from Chronicle. It tells Durka he's not being pushed from mid. At least not just yet. 
uh, this two-player hold at Tree. Tree's been a bit of a problem at times for them. Uh, oh, so now they oh, want to try to gone. keep it under control. Okay, spotting each other. Hunter's Fury. Okay. D I mean, Chronicle throws that flash and just blinds the bejesus out of Durka. On the hunt, on the chase, looking to try to get the tag. Goes across, does he get it? Yes, he does. Catch on the two, but... Stay alive. Meantime, this is a very messy fight in mid. And, and Fennel have massive retake ultimates too. So Fennel can just play offsite on A completely. I, they could play offsite B as well if they wanted to. But the, when you have the Killjoy KO ultimates, you can play full retake and be really, really happy about that. An enormous amount of it. The alarm box goes off. So if Fnatic do end up planting A, they need a strategy for playing aggressively without too much utility in the post plan. So leaving Boaster, for example, over towards Cat, so that they could refight this. Oh, Boaster's just gonna challenge mid. Amazing that Boaster kills two. There's just no way he should be getting two. Boaster's just won them the round by making a hero play. Yeah, Fnatic are kind of skilling it. And now they've got Fennel on the back foot where they're just getting ecoed. So, rough. Oh, God. What's happening over here then? Wait, what's what's going on? Did they run the same push down mid strat again? Wait, we've got to watch this round because it looks like it's going tits up again right off the beginning. Oh, they go for the tiles crunch. Boaster calls react A. Fennel tried to cut off the players in B tiles reacting A. Boaster just runs there. Yeah. You can see the way that Leo is walking around that he knows this is a potential danger for them. And Boaster's just people running like the heavy from TF2, thinking he has 450 health with an overbuff. Leo saved them, but he has given them two rifles. And Alpha's making a play, which is a very risky play to make, to try and save this round. It's worked, though. Alpha has not only been able to get a kill, he hasn't been traded. I'm about to review Fennel C9 right after this, Copio. So, let's have a look. I think the difference is probably that Fnatic are playing like shit. I think the actual difference, though, without me being flippant about it, is that Fnatic didn't scrim at all coming into this game, and Cloud9 have been scrimming for over a month, certainly. I'm not exactly sure when they started scrimming, but they've been doing trials with their team, and then they were playing the 10 Global Invitational, and then they've been playing this tournament as well. So Cloud9 have been playing and working on their map pool and stuff for a while, whereas Fnatic would look really rusty and like they are very out of sorts. They have locked down this round. But still, Fennel have those two fantastic retake ults. I mean, this should be Alpha using his ult. And then they need to come up with an idea of how they win a post plant against Killjoy KO ult. Wait, what are they cooking here? What is Boaster cooking? Are they going to try and use this as a fake and split B? This looks like they're trying to split A. CZ goes for the nade. Nice play by Fennel. And because there aren't enough people in A main, Fnatic can't stop that from happening. Nevertheless, Fnatic split through A, getting a lot of value here. Uh, sorry, after you break the lockdown, why are they all still running away? They did this on B as well, Fennel. They had a KO lineup to break the lockdown and they still ran away. And gave Fnatic all of the space. It's really bizarre. I'm not sure what they're doing. CLZ also not quick enough to pop his ult. Like, popping the ult there would be great. You know that you're fucked. You know you're fucked. You just know it in your bones. Just pop your ult, make sure that you get knocked to your knees, and the rest of your team might be able to help you. So Chronicle's ult is going to give them a lot of free time before Rhea can use his to retake. Rhea's going to use it over towards Heaven because they don't have tree control. Oh, good good spam. That's well-timed by Durka. He was anticipating that coming through. And the lockdown gets destroyed. Yeah, no KO ultimate able... Uh, sorry, no KO nade able to be used there to, to put pressure onto Durka. And Durka's got the lineup for it. Nicely done. 
It looked like Fnatic were starting to get the swing of things towards the end. They had like two... I, I think they had three really good attack rounds there. Um, their defense side looked pretty catastrophic, and a lot of their attack side did as well. But I think they had three very solid rounds from Fnatic. And they had some rounds where they won it just because their players are insane as well. Um, overall, though, not particularly impressive. Let's see how Cloud9 absolutely destroyed Fennel. Fennel getting tiles crunched, round one. It's a very quick start. They've already pushed straight through B main on the side of C9, taking space with a power. Cloud9 immediately leave, looking to see if there's a fast reaction. There was no fast reaction. These guys are like, can't hear them fast going A. And so immediately Oxy and Zeppa looking to re-explore elsewhere. Cloud9 are a very aggressive team on defense. They are like the opposite of Fnatic. They re-clear constantly. They're looking for fights constantly. I mean, that is over-aggressive by Oxy. Way over-aggressive. As soon as Vanity gets smoked off and Vanity and Zeppa start stepping back, that's where you need uh, Oxy to also start stepping back. Or at least push himself into, like, you know, if he was playing this corner, that's a little safer than just being out in the middle of mid. So C9 are playing offsite. They have the. I love this kind of uh, setup, by the way, that Curry's using. It's such a ranked, obliterating setup as well. You can put the turret here, or you can put the turret here at Jen, um, at uh, like behind Jenny. And the idea being that it slows the player that's here at switch. So you play off the turret contact. Off turret contact, you pop the Nana Swarms. Yes, the Bjor setup from ages ago, yeah. And it slows these players, and they just die. They just get absolutely melted. Oh my, oh my god, turret is actually going crazy right now. Oh my god, turret. That went crazy. Bonus round. Do they have anything cool prepped? It looks like they're going to go for the tiles crunch with, like, the recon over the top and Vanity's going to spray down. Oh, Vanity didn't go for the spray down. Maybe because he realized it was going to be a fast A setup. Yeah, good read by Vanity immediately. He counter drones, tries to, ta tries to tag somebody. So, decent exec there from Fennel too. They have a KO nade that goes up here. They have a Nana Swarm that goes out here as well. And they have somebody watching over towards Switch. I'd like to see them um, put a lot of attention over here towards Switch or have somebody in this smoke ready just in case uh, Zeppa was going to pop flash through the, the smoke. But otherwise, good, good attacking utility there. A bit, yeah, definitely awkward there. They didn't look really ready for how aggro C9 are going to be on this defense. Look at how well C9 are occupying the heaven angles and putting pressure on them here. They're just instantly out, instantly aggressive. So as soon as the... Look, as soon as the nade disappears from heaven, they've caught a player over here at door, and they just start... Poking and swinging out through heaven. So they, they win the fight over at door. It gets smoked off. They all go up to try and fight over heaven. Oxy swings to trade the players over in heaven as well. Nice. He could have tried to dash into his smoke as well. Might have been a little safer. You know, there could be somebody playing switch. But his timing's really nice. Great stuff by Cloud9. Oh you, do, you do not see Fnatic going for players like that in the match that we just watched. They're playing aggressive again. Another tiles crunch. They did a tiles crunch round one, and now they're doing a tiles crunch af straight after the tack timeout. So C9 have said, okay, Fennel are taking a tack timeout here. They're coming into this round with a game plan. Let's disrupt their game plan by immediately taking tempo. Uh, so now... Cloud9 are completely stopping any plan that Fennel had. Fennel had some kind of idea. Now they're being forced to defend. They're on the back foot. And Oxy's farming. Lovely, lovely set play. 
Much better than going for that dash down mid bollocks. And now Cloud9 are retaking. So they lost a bunch of mid information. Fennel went for this play where they go down mid and they threaten to walk like this, right? So they smoked this off here. So again, they're threatening the play that we just saw them run against Fnatic where they threatened to walk like this into spawn. An unusual thing. Maybe it would have caught Cloud9 off had they not just seen Fennel do it in a game against Fnatic. But what's the response look like? So for a Cloud9, a team that is very aggressive on the defense side who loves to go for reclear strategies, what we see them do is immediately try to retake market control. So they smoke off B-Main and they need B main as well. So there's no chance they're getting pushed through here. So now they only have to worry about being pushed from CT and being pushed from market. And they're going to decide to take the fight into market. Zeppel walks into market and catch is gone. Who's also worried about somebody having walked up here because they haven't actually taken the space themselves. And it just looks... It just looks crushing when Cloud9 do it. It looks just too easy for them because they have the confidence and the immediate reactions to retake areas of the map. And that's something that I think Fnatic struggle with even when they have a lot of scrim time on this map. I just don't think they're a very good Ascent team because Ascent is the map for reclearing on defense. KO knife being used to see whether Fennel have taken any aggressive mid control. Again, Cloud9 have used, look at this, with 30 seconds into the round, Cloud9 have used a lot of utility, way more util than Fnatic were doing. You know, they've already used their recon, they've already used their drone, they've already used a shock dart, they've already used a flash, they've already used a knife, um, they've already used uh, smokes. I mean, obviously, everyone's going to be using the smokes to refresh the one ways, but, you know, the, the point being that they use a lot of utility at the beginning of the round, but they maintain a lot of space and even actually tend to expand on the defense side. So now Fennel are walking down mid. Oxy's used his dash and now it disappears. So he's going to take a bit more of a passive setup. Oxy sees this. Okay, this smoke gives Oxy the timing. If he had dash, he would be popping it right now. But he's already used it. So the question for Oxy is how to be able to get one and get to a safe spot. So it looks like he's going to try and take this fight. Cloud burst and fight be main. Wow, that smoke could not have been better timed for him. Unfortunately, he's just got his back to it. I don't know why he would... It doesn't make any sense to me that Oxy would be looking backwards towards the market players because the market players are never going to walk into the B main smoke. It's only the B main players that would be walking into the B main smoke. So I think he's misplayed that situation. I think he got... Uh, you know, I think his brain overheated in that situation. All right, so first, uh, first round where we really see Fennel being able to... Uh, find an advantage. Cloud9 have massive ultimates here. Most of the ults on Ascent are good for retakes. Um, yeah, Oxy's definitely playing this a bit too boldly. I think the fact that they got out to a 6-0 lead is getting into Oxy's head and he feels like he can do anything he likes. He's just walked onto the angle there. Um, so he's gone down at the beginning of both of these rounds. This is where, okay, as soon as Curry hears this, I would I would be looking to try and play off-site right now. As soon as Curry hears the drone be main, I would be trying to leave the site because I think you want to be playing retake here. Um, you don't have any teammates to help you. You have huge ultimates to be able to work with. So if you ult as Curry right now, you're risking getting updraft dashed on. Um, you know, the, imagine that Fennel's jet swaps the rifles and gets a vandal in their hand, um, gives the operator to somebody else. There's a decent chance that you're going to get this just jumped on. And also, you're just going to get so overalted anyway. You're never really going to be able to hold on to this. So, and, and the great advantage of Cloud9 being able to retake is that they can get a free lockdown off with this KO ultimate too without having to worry about Dei Reali's ult breaking the lockdown. So I would like Curry to be trying to play off-site in this situation. It, it might even be a good thing for Curry that he wasn't allowed to use his lockdown there. But he's not going to be in a great position to use it. He's going to go for it. I would imagine this is going to trigger this overall. Dei Reali's at logs right now though. Whoa, 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 whoa. Holy shit. They did not expect that. Look at the minimap here. So these guys decided to push into the Sova who was ulting. Cool idea from Fennel. Again, Fennel really not 
<laughs> they refuse to path like a normal team. They've taken B main and everybody expects them to just go to the site, maybe fight the lockdown, something like that. They have their own lockdown being put up in B main here as well. Uh, they're trying to break this lockdown with Vanity and Vanity's getting pushed by these players over here. So definitely this, this pathing completely catching Cloud9 off guard. So they go for the knife and the cannon recon here um, to see if Oxy could kill some people who are playing aggressive A main. So he's dashed onto them with a judge right now. He backs out. So now he can go back and he can get the uh, knives online. And this is where you want to reset into an A split. If you still want to hit A, you want to reset into an A split here. Drone down mid. Drone doesn't really see anything. They need to watch out for the jet. Jet misses. Derry Ali, when does he get his recon dart back online? Because they could try getting a spam through the smoke if he had it. Oh, yeah. Smoke dissipates. Big crunch in mid from Fennel. Fennel love going for these mid crunches, and they're pretty good at it. Jake's taken some nice space over towards A, but Vanity's stuck. Oh, Vanity's got a timing on them. Wow. What? How? That is beautifully played by Jake and Vanity. Beautifully played. Vanity just hiding, not giving them any shred of information. And Jake should have had that. He's just unfortunate not to land the shot. Both of these... Oh, no. 57 health on the jet. So he will actually take two shots with the Sheriff. But Vanity's got a chance of winning this. I think Vanity was fragging actually quite well during this tournament. At least compared to what I expect from Vanity. I always have thought of him as quite a low fragging IGL. Somebody with not too much mechanical skill. But I thought he was popping in some of the matches that I saw. Well, I did say Vanity was hitting shots, but... Ooh, that's what I'm talking about. He was hitting the shots. That is fucking nasty final shot. He had two bullets. He had two bullets, Vanity, there. And he was fighting a jet with the final bullet that had 57 health, so he couldn't body shot him. He could only headshot him. What a sick clutch. This is what I was saying. Vanity actually felt like he was in pretty good form for this event. I'm interested to see whether it continues. All right. Big, big win.